what's happening, everybody? It's Thursday night. Oh, close that. It's Thursday night. Time for another episode of Thrifty <laughs> Business. I'm your one host, Vegas J. Hello. And tonight I have an extra special, an extra special co-host tonight, Angela. Hey oh, Jay, how's it going? What's happening, hey, everybody? How are you, Angela? Where where I'm are you good. located, Angela? We are in Anderson, Indiana tonight. And what's the uh, temperature going to be in Anderson, Indiana tonight? About four, probably. <laughs> it's it's really cold, oh. uh, freezing. It's messy, melted, muddy. Now it it's is. freezing over. So it's a, yeah, it's a chilly sixty degrees here in Ooh. Las Vegas. So, but let's find out. <laughs> Yes, time for Jay's Tiki Talk. Each week, I drink a different rum of a different tiki mug and try to match up to my guest. It couldn't be any easier than my friend Annette because Annette lives in Cleveland. Her and I have tipped back many a, a cocktail at Porco's Tiki Lounge. So there's the Porco's mug right there. And to go along with it, where to go? Oh, I have my Cleveland spiced rum. So there we go. Yay. Perfect. Nice. How are you, Annette? What's going on? And what's the temperature in Cleveland? Oh, you know what? It, it was 30 degrees when I drove um, from uh, Avon Lake to Parma tonight. It was 30. So it's probably holding steady, but uh, sinking fast with the approaching weekend. So yeah. it's January. It's Northeast Ohio. What are you going to do? Heck yeah. All right. Well, Annette's here to talk about uh, how you go from Nassau to lingerie. <laughs> so sit back, relax, enjoy the show, and we'll see you in about 25 minutes. Okay. All right, let's get right to it, shall All we? All right. Time for our scores of the week. Little bolos that you should be on the lookout for at the thrift stores or when you're out and about sourcing things that Angela and I have sold this week. And uh, she puts me to shame this week. Thanks to Russ. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this one's on me. Okay, this uh, pair of vintage lingerie or a pair of uh, vintage pantyhose still in the package. I paid 25 cents at the thrift store. If it wasn't 25, it was two for 25. Sold them for sixteen ninety nine, and that was on Etsy. We haven't had an Etsy yeah. score in a while, so that was cool. on Etsy, and it, you know they weren't listed very long, maybe a month or so. Very cool. Yeah, Bozo the Clown. Okay, I actually it sold for a best offer of twenty five ninety nine. Um, this is an old sticker book. It was it was still complete, um, but it was just a kid's sticker coloring book. Um, I bought a stack about this deep. Um, of old coloring books that didn't have the color pages colored or anything. So I have plenty more and I got the whole stack for $2 at an auction. That is badass. I didn't realize, yeah. I, you know, I give the show prep, but I didn't read, I didn't really read. I know it was a sticker book. That's even cooler. Yeah. I love the sticker books. Um, the, um, this is a vintage, uh, obviously it's pretty obvious. It's a hand tooled leather, uh, bicentennial purse, but it had never been used. It was still in its original box and the box was kind of beat up. Um, I threw it out there originally for ninety nine ninety nine. Just to see what would stick. Um, I, I I'd sold a similar style but used for like forty previously. So I was like, you know what? Let's double it. It's twice as nice. So um, we, you know, I, I I put it on sale and it sold for sixty nine ninety nine. I was pretty happy with that. Nice. And my mom in the chat says, Angela, get out of my quarter territory. <laughs> and I'm coming to her territory. Uh... Is that not killer? All right, my the backstory on that one. Uh, since we have the brick and mortar, we have a sign that says we buy almost anything. And a kid called and said, "Hey, I've got some old porcelain and some old metal advertising signs. Are you interested?" And I said, "Bring him in. We'll take a look." So he and Russ started talking, and he had nine signs, and his asking price was three hundred dollars. And of course, Russ tried to talk him down a little bit, and um, you know, and finally he he just said, "You know, fine. You know, we'll I'll pay, I'll pay you the three hundred. and um, this one blew my mind. It blew my mind. Um, it sold for $1,253. Well done. Yeah. And, um, all said and done, when we were done selling the signs, our net was over 2000 from that $300 investment. And it only took a week for all of them to sell. That is awesome. Now I feel bad showing a $1,253 sign. And then I'm like, look at this $35 t-shirt I sold. But it's the Transformer. <laughs> yeah. Who's the, yeah so what's that guy's name? This, uh, this, this is Optimus Prime, and this was a 4XL t-shirt. So not, you know, there's not a lot of customers in that size, but they also don't have a ton of options. So when you find them in the big, big sizes, both men and women's, make sure you snag them up because there is a big dude who is way bigger than me uh, that's going to be enjoying his new Transformers t-shirt now. 
Very nice. And then, this is a modern shirt by RJC. RJC is a, br a brand that's been making Hawaiian shirts forever. There's a tag. Uh, for whatever reason, this pattern really struck a, a nerve in the Tiki Hawaiian shirt community. They don't make this print anymore, but I have sold this this print three times now, and I always get sixty to over a hundred dollars. And you, that is not the norm for a middle of the road Hawaiian shirt that's modern. Yeah, but that's really a cool look, though. You know, it it reminds me of like the the old stamp collector. Yeah, no, definitely. Cool. I, I would have bought it. But they should definitely have come back with us. But I hope they don't because it's good for us. <laughs> Real quick, what did you start the sign? What what did Russ start the sign auction out? What price? I believe that one. I think he started it at ninety nine ninety nine. Okay. Some of the other ones he started. One started at nine ninety nine, and then he had some that he started around the fifty dollar range. But that one he started at a hundred bucks, and it was sitting at about I think what was it nine hundred and fifty dollars, going into the last thirty seconds. Awesome. All right. Now you might yeah. think, Jay, why, why is this a score of 15 bucks? Where? So I got six of these right before last Christmas. And, they, you know, you know, although they're Christmas colors and they're called Christmas dog toys, dogs don't know colors. But I sold, <laughs> I sold like one last Christmas and then one like in uh, like April and then none this Christmas and the other four after Christmas. <laughs> so, you know, just goes to show you keep, you know, and, it, you know, wasn't big sales, but I paid two bucks a, a bag for six bags. And they all sold off the same listing. So it's super easy to list. And uh, I made some, you know, okay, money. And it was easy, but it was weird that the majority sold after the second Christmas. And if you're not familiar with Iron Maiden, you should be. It's one of the all-time greatest heavy metal bands. Yep. And pretty much anything you find uh, with their mascot, Eddie, on it, records. Uh, that's Eddie behind me. For those of you who don't know, who always wonder what those eyes are. <laughs> that's an Eddie Bartol right there from the last concert. But I sold this record for $37.49. Nice All right, after done. we do the scores of the week, I do my CD scores of the week. Uh, oh, whoops. I didn't set that. There we go. Right now. All right, I couldn't decide between the two because they sold for the same price. I thought I'd show you both. <laughs> Uh, I know this is everyone's favorite band, Saint Just. Yeah, oh, I don't know. Mine, I don't, absolutely. I don't know okay. them either, but when I scanned <laughs> it at the uh, record store, I liked what I saw. I paid $7.99 and it sold it for $50. I'd make it my favorite. And I thought this was a D level metal band uh, from the uh, 80s. I did just find out it was a parody band. So this is like the British version of Spinal Tap. Nice. And so it's kind of a fake metal band, but. Uh, I paid uh, $3 and I sold it for $50. So that's nine, uh, 10 bucks into a hundred dollars. Yep. Easy peasy. Now. A lot easier to ship than that sign was. Oh uh, yeah. Way easier than shipping that giant sign. <laughs> so those of you who have not taken my webinar yet, you should get over to www.flippincds.com. It is two and a half hours of so much content. Your brain will explode. You're going to need to watch it more than once. But I teach you all about what you're looking for and from two, really two angles, how to get through all the stuff in the thrift store quickly and how to go and move about a record store and find out the good things that they miss. Now, every week, I'm going to be giving away a webinar. So if you haven't bought it, at least for a couple more weeks, I'm about to give one away. Uh, and so here is, uh, I'm going to implore all of you, please, 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 if you have seen the webinar or you're in the secret beach where you can watch the webinar, don't answer the question. Please, 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 please. Two of the last four winners didn't need to win. And I get it. I love playing trivia. I get excited when I want to answer a question. But let someone win who doesn't have who hasn't seen it yet, please. All right. So I did give a little clue in the thrifting board earlier today. We'll see if anyone paid attention to the clue. So here is the question. Are we ready? You need to know who this is. Uh, is it coming up? Oh, there we go. You need to know who this is because in 1971, this album came out and her backing band at that time quit and became their own band. What band did they turn into? That's the question. Dude, I should have the, uh, I don't think I have the Jeopardy music anywhere. I should have that. <laughs> that would be perfect right now, but it's probably, uh, obviously it's copyrighted. I probably get like, no, 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 no. Yeah, you'd get yanked for that one. So the first person to answer the question who did this person's backing band turn into will win the webinar? Angela did not know, and neither did Debbie. I knew who she was, though. Yes. So, hey. yeah. 
I, that's she's kind of my speed. So I would yeah, I, I do want to make it super easy, but I figured, you know, I, uh, and next week uh, I'll even give you a clue. Next week I'm going to go for a younger question, so a more modern question. I went for the older crowd tonight. <laughs> You're getting some good guesses. Yeah. Oh shoot. Uh, and Joseph's the only one guessing. Uh, and I apparently, apparently, either people don't know who this is or they're not Googling fast enough. Wanda Willis gets it. Congratulations, Wanda. Way so, to go, in, Wanda. In 1971, the Pogues. That's a funny answer, Christine. In 1971, at various times between recording the album and touring, she had the first four members of Eagles in her backing band, and they at one point said, ah, oh, shit, we should have our own band. So this is Linda Ronstadt and her 1971 backing band turned into the Eagles. So there you go. All right, so our winner, no, no. Our winner would be... I lost it already. Uh, Bobby Wilms? No, Wanda. So Wanda, Wanda okay. send me a message on Facebook and I will hook you up later this evening. So thank you everyone for participating. And uh, next week I said I got a question already in my brain for uh, uh, for a, a younger, more modern question. So be caught up. Now, for those of you who didn't win, go get the webinar, flippingcds.com. It's a kick-ass webinar. You will get every dollar's worth the first time you find two good CDs. All right. Back to it because not everything is winners. <laughs> These are our duds of the week. Oh, I I see that I misread. Ruben Rodriguez actually said the Eagles first. I'll tell you what. I'll give it to Ruben and to Wanda. I don't want to. Oh, take, that's I don't, nice. I don't do any take backs. My wife pointed out I misread. So Ruben, Ruben, you message me too, please. And I will get you taken care of. Sorry about that. Excellent. All right. Oh, this is a bummer. Okay, so, this is. Um... So I said a two hundred fifty-six dollar <laughs> sign is your dud of the week. And she said, "Yeah." I said, "Okay." I don't yeah, know and here's why. Um, we sold this. This is in that batch of signs from the same original three hundred dollar purchase. Um, and we had now these signs are meant to stay outside, right? These are advertisement signs. They've been on the side of a building since you know. It's from the 1940s. So look how much it's been exposed to. Well, we put it up in the front window. And for whatever reason, we don't know if somebody had coated this one with something prior to us getting it. But when we pulled it out, it had like a white ick on it. And this is what happened. Oh, hang on. Yeah, bummer. See that? So, yeah. we, I mean, Russ was, I mean, his heart sank. He was like, oh my God, what's happened? So we tried to gently wipe it. and. It, it was just revealing the blue paint underneath, but I mean, we couldn't send it as it was. It was a for sure item, not as described. So we contacted the buyer, sent them photographs and um, asked them how they wanted to proceed. And they said, you know what, we'll go ahead and cancel it. Now on this one, it's going to turn back into a score because this is actually local to our uh, little town that's near us. And on the, you know, those Facebook groups where it says, you know, if you grew up in Markleville, mm -hmm. you grew up in Vegas, Somebody had found this listing on eBay and it actually shared it on the Facebook page. So that was kind of cool. Now, Markleville doesn't have much. They've got a gas station, gas station, a liquor store, a police department, but they also have an auction house. So that sign's going to go to the local auction house and be sold there. That's cool. So that's why. Yeah, I, you know, I, get, I get now why it. I remember that story, but I don't know why this $300 lamp is a dud. <laughs> this is my biggest auction ever. Pers this is on me, hanky pankies. And I. You know, look at that. I did the light up picture and they didn't pay this person. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that something terrible hasn't happened, but I can't find any other reason why this person wouldn't have paid for it. it, it it's gone into um, unpaid assistant and time is up tomorrow. So I'm going to have my chance to first chance to do a second chance my first chance to do a second chance offer. Oh, so I ain't going to be so, a dud. You're just I hope not. That's that's not a real I'm hoping dud. Not. Let, let me show you what a real dud looks like. It, it, it looks <laughs> like a door of the Explorer <laughs> Halloween scrub probably because it's size small that I've had for three years, finally Ooh. sold a $9.99 auction with free shipping. That's a real dud. <laughs> that is bad. And also, I, I don't know what I was thinking. This, this volume two isn't a big seller. <laughs> and I, I bought a bunch, but I sold it for four fifty. dollars I paid like a dollar and a quarter. So when everything was said and done, it was just a colossal waste of time. Waste of time. Yeah. All right, now it's time for... <laughs> Where in the world did our stuff go? If you are not selling worldwide, you are leaving out $7.3 billion 
potential customers. And every week I sell tons of stuff around the world. And luckily my co-host this week, she has international sale too. I did. I sold this rain slicker to, I, I think it's Geisen, Geisen, Germany. Apparently this guy needed a slicker. It was a, it was a big size. Who knows? Who now, for those of you who know Rammstein, I, I, when, as soon as I saw this, I picture one of the guys in Rammstein wearing this in concert. And this is something that was sold on QVC. It's a, you Even know. Even more now. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And then mine was uh, heading, is heading to New South Wales. It's a, a lucky brand t-shirt, uh, Johnny Cash at Folsom State Prison, uh, which well, could have used cool. a little bit of ironing. Uh, no way. I just got an offer for something out of Australia just this second. Uh, I got goosebumps. How crazy is that? That's crazy. Uh, Let's we're see talking it. about Australia, and I got an offer of 25 bucks for a Seattle supersonic hat, which I'm going to sell <laughs> to Australia. <laughs> as I'm talking about Australia, the circle awesome. is complete. Is. I sold a Hawaiian shirt to Hawaii too. But talk about yesterday. why you should, while we're talking about it on the show, I'm selling a hat to Australia. That's crazy. I'm checking my phone. I'm not selling anything to Australia. Crazy. Hey, right. I did have an offer for a hat to Australia. Now it's time for Close enough. our thrifty tip of the week. Little tips and tricks to help you out when you're outsourcing. Check for shipping supplies. Check for things that you can use in your business when you're at the thrift store, garage sales, that kind of stuff. Uh, my mother-in-law, those vacuum bags from Ziploc, she found a gazillion of them all packed, like one folded inside another, inside another. I think she paid like 50 cents at a garage sale and there must've been like 30 of those in there. And I have used them for everything. I don't usually necessarily use them for big giant stuff even. I, you know, they're all different sizes. I've used them for shipping coats and sweaters and just things that needed a little bit bigger than a Ziploc would have covered. But I've, I mean, I found peanuts, all kinds of stuff. You just gotta look under the tables and- Exactly. Anytime I can save money on business supplies, you know, the consumables, gotta do it. And they've already paid for the hat. So guess what? You'll be seeing next week's show. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right, so here's my thrifty tip of the week. I, I bought this CD for $9.99, I sold for $11.95. Now you're like, why is that a tip? You, you, you lost money when, when all the smoke cleared, but I didn't lose a lot. This is at a record store that has the way it's situated in uh, LA. There is no cell reception ever, ever in a million years. So I put a lot of my knowledge to the test, but also I guess, you know, vintage bottom of the uh, voice of bottom of the sea, vintage uh, soundtrack by Jerry Goldsmith. Jerry Goldsmith is a great composer. Thought I'd give it a whirl. So it really didn't lose much. Maybe I lost a dollar, but the gamble could have paid off. It could have been one of them $50, $100 CDs. So uh, just sometimes go with your gut. If you're wrong, you're wrong, but still get your money back, all right? But other CDs I got that day that I was just using my gut and my knowledge, I made a lot of money on. So the the few that weren't the best, they just go out in the wash. <laughs> it all works out. Yep. All right. <laughs> you have got to be shipping me. Little tips and tricks, what to do and what not to do when you are shipping. Okay, this is the same item. And both on both sides here, and I, uh, as I, I wrapped it up the first time over here on, on the left hand side, and it was going to take me three sheets of small bubble, and I just got these two huge giant like wagon wheel size bubble wraps, and I was like, you know what? Let it, it made me stop the shipping and go to my invoice and check, and I did the math, and I know math isn't my thing all the time, um, but I did the math twice and checked it, and it cost me five cents for a sheet of the giant bubbles or nine cents for three of the small ones. And it's only a few pennies, but those pennies turn into dollars. So guess what? Those went out in one sheet. And I, you know, if I'm, if I'm using it like that all the time, you know, it, it, it's going to add up. Oh, I, I am so cheap. Oh my God. I say, that's even more, sweet, sweet, that sweet. Word, but <laughs> even more concise about it than I get. I'm like, Oh, whatever. All right. So first off, I want to sh send a oh. shout out to Rochelle Baldwin. I, I hope she's watching. She's new to the thrifting board, and she she said, "You have," because I said, "Hey, I'm going to give you a shout out tonight." And she said, uh, "What what what show?" I go, "My show for four years." She goes, "Oh, I'm new to the group." I'm like, "Oh, cool." <laughs> but I want to give you a shout out. She found at Goodwill for one dollar this Kahiki plate, which was a tiki place in Columbus, Ohio. I didn't have this piece, and and her and I struck up a great deal for it. Uh, which was awesome, and I couldn't wait to add it to my collection. So here's my shipping tip of what not to do. Where I live, we have shared 
mailboxes. And then if you get a package, there's two big mailboxes that the packages go in and then the key goes into your mailbox. Well, last Friday it was raining and neither I nor Stacy wanted to go out in the rain and get our package. So we wait till Saturday. By Saturday, it had been stolen. So it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. So rain, sleet, snow, ice, go get your mail. Unfortunately, it's just the way things are nowadays. People love to steal mail. The real bummer is, you know, they're looking for electronics and expensive modern stuff. I know whatever thief stole this, opened up this old dingy plate and went, what the hell? And threw it away. I'm sure of it. So they threw away history. And as soon as the mail shows up, go get it. Especially if you're in the communities like Vegas, where you're in shared mailboxes, kind of yeah. easy to pop it open. Because Stacy came in and said, hmm, the key was in our mailbox. But there was no package in the big locker. And I never thought about time. I'm like, hey, where's my Kahiki plate that should have been here? Oh, yeah, got delivered on Friday, the same day that mine and some other people in the neighborhood's mail got stolen. So, But, but Rochelle, thank you. I do love you. You, you sent me a great deal. And uh, find, find me another one, I'll buy it again. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Could, why couldn't it have been the day that, you know, labels came or something? You know, not not, yeah. not on yeah. plate day. But That's I'm going to keep an eye out on local apps and, and eBay and stuff because she's got a bunch of good pictures that she messaged me. So I know all the nuances of the crazing and stuff like that. So I could definitely prove if it shows up anywhere that that's the one. Oh yeah. Um, and I'm the eternal optimist. I'm like, you're going to find it. It's going to be at a rum sale or somebody's going to have it. And I, I wouldn't want to be there when you find it, but, um, but it'll, it'll, it'll come. Yep. I will keep an eye on for it. All right. Now it's time for eBay tip of the week. Our eBay tip of the week, little tips and tricks. <laughs> on ebay to help you out when you're listing or selling oh i guess i'm going first Go all right so i can list cds on amazon not a lot of you can but you also can list on platforms and my tip is when something doesn't work on one form don't automatically think it's just done check another platform this was listed on amazon for two years and it was the cheapest <laughs> one on amazon and it lasted six hours on ebay before it got sold that's crazy yeah and I paid a buck crazy. 67 for this. So I had to wait two years to get my 37 and 49, but I obviously had it on the wrong platform. So don't ignore other platforms. I pulled some stuff from eBay that isn't going to work. And Stacy was helping me today, my lovely wife, and I'm moving it into an Etsy tub. I've never listed on Etsy, uh, but I got a lot of stuff that I know will be good on Etsy. So I'm making my first Etsy tub and I'm going to start moving things to Etsy. So don't give up when it doesn't sell on one platform. Try at least one other platform. Exactly. Okay, and this is my thrifty tip or my eBay tip for this week. Um, I'm at a point with my store. I only opened an eBay store in March of last year. And, you know, it was only October before that that I was even selling on eBay exclusively myself. My I was always on with my husband's. Um, it's time for me to make a decision. Um, it's time for me to upgrade. Um, you know, it is just as simple as looking at the numbers. I, I went back two months and I'm like, okay, I have paid. I'm paying too much in insertion fees. I, I could have I could have already upped up my store level. Um, but I didn't want to do it in December. You know, I was a little nervous. I was like, you know, these, these aren't pure numbers because it's, it's Q4 and all that stuff. But when I, when I go back and look, if I'm going to continue listing all the stuff that I have here to list, it's, I'm going to be throwing money away. So it's time to upgrade. So, you know, sometimes you just got to, you have to spend a little bit of money to get better returns. And that's hard as a, as a brand new seller, that's hard. So miss, I'm not going to spend nine cents. I'm going to spend six cents. <laughs> then says, <laughs> one, two, one, hey, spend some more money. <laughs> exactly. But see, it was, I, if I had $56 last month in insertion fees on top of my regular per subscription fee, I'm already losing money. So I want my nickels back. So no uh, Rick, Rick Belger says, well, I cross list, you know, Rick, I and will cross list. I will uh, cross list when I have expensive items that I know won't sell quick. Like I wouldn't cr cross list a $20 item, but if I have a $400 CD, I'll absolutely cross list it because the number of customers <clears throat> who want it, who can pay for it are going to be few and far between. So they won't be quick sellers. So that that's when I do do some cross listing. All cross right. And before makes me nervous. To, as you can see, we have a special guest joining us for a quick second here. Before we get to that, here's our viewer tip of the week. All right, our viewer tip this week is coming from Alyssa Stone. She's in the thrifting board. Um, she is telling us about cleaning up those canvas sneakers, hats, tote bags, that kind of stuff. Uh, the absolute best cleaner I have found to clean canvas shoes and laces is Shout Advanced Gel Brush. 
Um, it's usually expensive and a tube goes a long way. She's had great success cleaning even the grossest looking skate shoes and sneakers and they smell fresh too. That's always a plus if they come out smelling better, if they've been on your feet. Um, just follow the instructions and of course, always use your best judgment, test it in an inconspicuous area first. Um, don't hold us personally liable if something goes wrong. Um, <laughs> But, you know, it's a great tip and it's got that little built in brushy scrubby thing on the top. I've used that before and it it's a good it's a good tool to have. So thank you, Alyssa, for that. Awesome. Right yeah. Along. Yeah. Always start in an inconspicuous place. Don't start right in the middle of the front. <laughs> yeah. Like maybe try the insole first. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this uh, pretty lady? All right. So we have a quick uh, special guest join us here for a few seconds and uh, let's welcome Erica to the show. Hi, Erica. Hi, thanks for having me. Hi, Erica. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for hopping on Hi. here. All right. So Eric and I have been chatting, and I want to use the thrifting board. Now, if you don't know what the thrifting board is, it is my uh, Facebook group. It's for thrifters and eBayers and Amazoners and Etsyers of all uh, shape, sizes, levels, ages. Come on over. It's a free group. There's 53,000 members that love to help each other. But speaking of helping each other, we now want to use the group to help the uh, government employees who are being affected by the shutdown. So Erica, real quick, tell us, uh, how are you being affected by the shutdown? Well, my husband is a federal law enforcement officer for Department of Treasury. And we found out mid-December that a shutdown was on the brink of the horizon. His vacation at Christmas was recalled and we thought, okay, well, we can last a couple weeks. And here we are over a month later, um, kind of wondering when we're going to get back to life as normal. So they're existing yeah. off of Erica's eBay business. And so what we're going to start doing starting tomorrow with Erica will be number one. The thrifting board is going to profile a member of the thrifting board every day that is either a government employee or their spouse is a government right employee that has been furloughed. And then what I'm asking the members <laughs> of the thrifting board to do is to Check out their store. If there's something that you need or you want, buy it directly from them. Give them a hand while they are waiting for this um, this government uh, shutdown to end. This is not going to be a political discussion, mm -hmm. but we are going to give a helping hand to our members. And what I'll do is I will buy something from every single person we profile. So I will put my money on the table to help uh, where I can. And look, it don't got to be anything big. But if, every, if Erica's got helps. a bunch of $5 items in her store and a hundred of us buy a $5 item that will help put food on the table. Right, Erica. That's exactly right. And thank you so much for using your platform to help. So Erica, and Erica's going to help me. So, uh, she's going to help me. Not that I think anyone would be, you know, unscrupulous and say they work for the government when they don't, but Hey, my mail just got stolen. So we always got to be, <laughs> you know, double check all of our stuff. And so what we're going to do is Erica, uh, I'm going to start two posts tomorrow, one for Erica's store and please buy something from her if you can, or see something you like, and then a post for people to say, Hey, this is affecting me because I work for the government or my spouse does. Uh, and it can be life partner. I'm not, I'm certainly not holding uh, a candle to, uh, you know, <laughs> if it's a legal wedding, you know, I don't care if you're, if the person in your house, or for the government, yeah. yeah. Uh, so Erica's going to help me vet those people because she knows what to ask or look for. And then we'll we'll profile one person every day. So uh, make sure to hop in the thrifting board starting tomorrow uh, with Erica and uh, see if they got something in their store. And it doesn't have to be an eBay store. So if you're an Etsy seller, we'll show your Etsy store. If you're an Amazon seller, if you're a Mercari seller, whatever you, know, and, you sell on, put your store there. And you know, outside of shopping, you could go in and you could share their stuff. Go drink let to their store and share all their stuff on onto your social media, onto their onto your Pinterest boards. You know, there's other ways we can help out. I I need jeans though. I blew out the name of my jeans, so you know I'll be shopping. I hope you got something for me. But you know, the, the, we are community. We are community, and we're family. And um, you know, I mean, everybody. We see it. It's like we we celebrate together and we grieve together when things happen. And and sometimes you know, sometimes we all need a little hand up. Uh, you know, some uh, help. And if this works, you know, I hope it does. So, Erica, real quick uh, before we say goodbye to you, what is your store name? But of course, it'll be up in the thrifting board tomorrow. Well, my store name is planting underscore a underscore vineyard. Planting a vineyard. Planting so, wine. It's underscore up. Vineyard. I like it. All right, Erica, you oh, and me. We're going to tackle this. So everyone, keep an eye out for her post in the post. If this is affecting you, we want to get you up. We'll need somebody for Saturday and Sunday and Monday. And uh, let's 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 give each other a helping hand. So thank you, Erica, for stopping in. And I'll chat with you later tonight or tomorrow morning. Bye, Erica. Awesome.
Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. So real quick housekeeping before we get uh, Annette in here. Those of you in the Seeker Beach, uh, Annette is doing some more bonus tips for you guys tonight. So a bonus tide pool. So in the Seeker Beach members, head on over to the Seeker Beach and you'll see the link for the after show, which will start one minute after this show ends. And then this Sunday, we don't have the exact time yet, but this Sunday, Mom and I sell on past your expiration date. Being thrifty over 50, how to start a meetup group. Now, it is a topic that not everyone's going to be interested in because maybe you don't care about starting a meetup group or you already go to one. But Mom will have her usual scores, her usual haul, embarrassing photos. So come hang out with us. Plus, most of you will be snowed in anyway. The meetup group is how I met Annette. There and you go. Peggy. See, and you make friends. And you, actually. That was the first time I met oh, you. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, and then those of you in the Secret Beach, your guest webinar this month is Typhoon Shannon, otherwise known as Recyclista. She's going to come. She's going to. We're going to hang out in the kitschy kitchen. She's going to teach us all about what to look for in vintage kitchen supplies. And then this Thursday, or this coming Thursday, a week from today, obviously, uh, will be our next yes. uh, guest, Tom <laughs> Michaels. Now, some of you saw Tom's post in the thrifting board. Tom had a corporate job for 32 years, and he was just done 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 and he hung it up and he found ebay and the thrifting board last fall and he is killing it killing it on ebay he went from nothing to thousands of dollars in sales in a couple short months and so, and, he, and he shared that the thrifting board so as soon as we had seen that we were like you gotta be on the show he's like i'd love to tell my story so he'll be on next week so it's a great story of inspiration and Can't you can do one. it too and last but not least, oh, I forgot to put the link. The link will be down below. Uh, I have a class coming up in Denver, Friday, February 8th. It is the In the Thrift Store class. We spend four hours going section by section, showing you what to buy and, more importantly, what to skip, uh, teaching you all the sections of the thrift store. And everyone in the class, they buy all the stuff. I buy nothing when I teach a class. We fill your carts up, and they go out, hang out, and have lunch. And the place we're having lunch at is it will be the funnest lunch of any class I've ever thrown thrown and those of you not able to be in denver i will share pictures you're going to be blown away by the place we have lunch so, i'm kind of jealous fun. that's too far to go yeah a little far to go so let me uh let me get uh hello i see her yeah let me uh i gotta get her hold on let me get her screen up I'm there so excited <laughs> shada, shada, shada. and calm cool and collected that's what i am Hey, everybody. Here. It's a time for <laughs> Annette Rostetter. How are you, Annette? What's happening? Fantastic. Welcome, everyone, to my pop-up boudoir at the scene. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I forgot to ask you the top of the show. What are you drinking tonight? Tonight, I am drinking um, Diet Pepsi because I needed to keep my wits about oh, me. But it Diet Pepsi. <laughs> oh, but oh. Yeah. However, <laughs> I, I'm going fancy. This is uh, from, um, from Palm Springs. Uh, bootlegger tiki. Nice. Good mug. So, good mug. Yeah. Yes. All right. So normally we kind of do what the guest is to talk about and then their scores and duds, but, but Annette actually sent me the presentation like in a slideshow. So I think we're, we're going to knock out your scores and duds real quick. Okay. And then I'll, then I'll be able to, then I'll have to share the slideshow. So let's, Sounds uh, good. and the funny thing is in Annette's scores and duds, there is no lingerie. <laughs> I, that's because I put them all in my presentation. I know, I know. Yeah, I didn't want to be redundant. <laughs> I'd love to buy old rotary phones. Love them, love them, love them. Pick this one up. Um, I did pay ten dollars for it, but I knew I could get my money for it. Sold it for uh, almost seventy three um, plus uh, shipping. So that was a very, very good find. I sold a pale green one not too long after that right. one. Now this one. Uh, this is using one of uh, Jason's tips, which he always says, you know, take advantage of current events, of pop culture. It's happening right now. And of course, with all of the, you know, the publicity around Freddie Mercury and the Bohemian Rhapsody movie, I happen to think, oh, I have the sheet music to that. I actually bought this in uh, the 70s. I was a huge, still am a huge Queen fan. And uh, so I decided, you know, I, I rarely play my piano anymore. And and I couldn't really see me sitting down and pounding out. I'm in love with my car or anything. <laughs> so I decided to uh, to uh, sell it. And it sold within a couple of days for 60 bucks. So nice. So thank you, Jason. Lovely. Keep those tips wow. coming. And of course, the iconic uh, ceramic Christmas tree. This is one I bought from an estate sale this past spring um, of my neighbor. 
just a, an elderly lady moved to assisted living and I bought a couple of her ceramic trees and uh, sold this one for $73 as well. $73 seemed to be my, my big number there for a while, but this thing was but ugly. Uh, that blue green with the silver uh -huh. on it, just, uh, <laughs> it's, it was nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Another tip that we always hear from Jason is uh, character sheets and uh, came across these. I think I paid a dollar for them, <clears throat> sold them for 40, 41. Uh, easy. I love sheets. Love to deal with the uh, character. So sheets. simple. Yeah. Yeah. And this was, an, okay, another one of Jason's uh, tips. I didn't even realize it at the time, but um, these I found in the Halloween section. You know, he always nice. tells you to look in Halloween. You never know. So I'm going through the Halloween stuff and I came across these pants. It's like, what are these? And then it became pretty obvious because of the suede patches on them and so forth. These were some kind of riding pants. And so I snagged them for, I think, $6 and uh, sold them for uh, 48 so thank you, nice. Jason, all your tips. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. But unfortunately, not everything goes well. So here's no, <laughs> no. And this was, this was uh, in December, uh, about the middle of December, I just decided I needed to run a sale and I needed to run a serious sale. A lot of people wait till after Christmas. I decided to do mine during December and I ran a 40% off sale. Uh, of almost everything in my store. I just decided to go for broke. And, uh, you know, in some cases it worked out very, very well for me. I still got good prices on things and it was happy. Uh, but I got a lot of rid of a lot of old stuff. And this was one of them. I think I probably paid a buck for this tie and nobody wanted it at any price, but did sell it uh, for $8.99 in free shipping. So as we all know, after fees and everything else, I think I made about 50 cents. So anyway, that's it. Here's but my tip not, give you on this is um, who, who I and I don't know Star Trek well enough, so forgive me, Trekkies out me there. I'm a Star Wars so who's the captain on Next Generation? Even uh, though he's on this tie, I might have put his name instead of uh, Ralph mm, Rollin, which is mm -hmm. the manufacturer of the tie in the title, just for some bonus keywords. Yeah, good thought. Oh well. <laughs> now this is a done. This is cool. This is that so is cool. cool. This thing was scary. I had this sitting out for a while around Halloween. I had to put it away. It was, it was creeping me out. And it was, <laughs> the thing is, it is ginormous. It was like this big. I mean, see if you can see me here. It was big. It was big. And as you can see, I had free shipping. And I think it went to California. Well, Ohio to California, do you know what the shipping is? It's pretty high. So once again, I think I probably made about $3 on this. Um, they just weren't selling for a lot anyway, even at 25% off. Um, but yeah, I saw it. I had to grab it. I thought, oh my gosh, everybody in the world's going to want this. So not so yeah. much. Too too big to FOMO, I take it? Yeah, oh, way too big to FOMO. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, this thing was, oh yeah. <laughs> that was, oh, yeah. Like that big? Oh it, wow. It was big. Yeah. It was large. All right. Let's get your, uh, so, so Annette's here because we're going to talk vintage lingerie. There we go. And so real quick, we'll, we'll give you a quick bio. So you worked for NASA for 34 years. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And no, oh, go ahead. I was saying, what uh, were you, was it like this was the time you retired or did you choose, this is when I'm retiring? No, it was a, like you're talking about your guest for next week. Um, I just got to the point where I was done. Um, I was just done and uh, was doing well with the eBay and just had some other things going on in my life. And it was, uh, you know, I, you know, taking care of parents and all that kind of thing. So I just decided I didn't really retire. I, um, I actually quit when you're, of course, you're under retirement age. Um, it's just called quitting. But, um, <laughs> you know, when you're close to 60, I guess you can call it, call it retiring. Um, and just another, just, um, I'm really happy to hear that you're doing what you're doing uh, for the furloughed employees. And if we could also just add to that, not just um, government employees, but we can't forget our contractor friends because they are affected by this as well. That's what I was for 34 years and went through uh, quite a few shutdowns myself. Um, contractor employees, their employers don't give them another job. It doesn't work that way. And um, they will more than likely not get any kind of back pay unless they were essential and they've been, you know, they've been working. They would definitely. Um, so let's not forget about our contractor plans, yeah. of which I was for 34 years. So and that's a good tip. And like I said, Eric is going to help me because we talked behind the scenes about how to prove it. 
And I would like to think that the world's a happy place, but I, I know for a fact that my haters sit in the thrifting board under assumed name. So I, I'm not going to believe anybody until I can see yeah. a little bit of proof. And that's just the way life is nowadays. And I, I'm sorry it is, but, but Erica, Erica's like, yeah, we can just, all I got to do is ask him like these two questions. Yeah. We'll know if they're legit or not. So, but contractors too, don't forget about them. Yep. So they're often uh, not included mm -hmm. in statistics and when they talk about it um, in the news and so forth. So I kind of have to stick up for them a little bit. So. All right. So let's get from NASA to what's hanging behind you in your yeah. boudoir. There's no direct correlation, just so you know. I generally went to work every day with, uh, you know, fully clothed. So <laughs> <laughs> it's optional here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So somehow, I don't know how I even fell into it. I think, you know, I'm a girl. I like girly stuff. So I kind of gravitated towards, you know, I would see maybe a fancy nightgown, the thrift store or somewhere and picked it up and then picked up another one and then gathered a few more. And then next thing you know, it seems like that's kind of what I'm specializing in. So um, in any event. Hmm. For some reason, when I go to push play, it uh, doesn't, uh, it goes black. Huh. Hmm. See? Yeah. Okay. So well, we're, you're going to you're gonna see the, you're going to see the inner workings of, yeah. <laughs> of Keynote <laughs> right now. And I will zoom in here because I don't know why it's doing that. And of course, okay. no so time. Uh, to... Go ahead. I read Go ahead, in Angela. your, okay. I, I read in your bio that you ended up at somebody's garage sale and they were, had been a collector. And that's yeah. kind of the same thing that happened with me was that yeah. we went to, we actually, we went to Ohio. So I was in your territory, yeah. but we went to Ohio um, over in the Cincinnati area and we were there to buy some dishes. You know, this was like a leap of faith to even make that trip over there um, to get these specific atomic dishes. And Francis while I was there, there. Uh, it was a Franciscan atomic uh, starburst. Yeah. Starburst, and yeah. So that was like the score of a lifetime. But then we get yes. over there and we're in this house and upstairs there are like two garbage contractor size garbage bags and there's lingerie and there's still tags on it. And, oh, no. and I won't even I can't even someday I will tell you the story. And we can cry together over the two closets of clothing and all the original shoes in the boxes that I was too scared because we, we got there and we had to pay cash and we're like, okay, we only have to switch cash with us. We, and we, we brought the car. We didn't even bring an SUV. So I was like, we got to get all this stuff back to Indiana. So I was like, okay. So I spent $7 and that's kind of where the little hanky panky vintage, that's where that name came from. And it, you know, and that, it just kind of sparked something. It, it was still it. like, five years because you know i sold with my husband for a long time and he did sell some of that lingerie um but it wasn't really his his thing but anyway are we fixed jason yeah I'm, we're gonna go this way so just, okay yeah. you'll see the inner workings of 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 kino but sorry we want to show it all right so so the floor is yours, my dear. I'll just. Okay. Okay. And it, it, please excuse. I didn't mean to make this formal, but I wanted to be able to give you a lot of examples. And the best way to do that is just to show graphics. And 99% uh, of what you'll see, um, there are photographs of uh, actual items that I either have listed or have sold. Most of them I have sold too. To give you, you know, because the more you see the stuff, the more you'll recognize it when you're out there and then you can grab it. So the first thing I want to talk about a little bit is, is labels. And please make note of this website if you're not familiar with it. If you sell any type of vintage clothing, um, this is a great resource to use. Um, because uh, it will show you how to date your items based on what the label looks like. And uh, they have a, a huge number of, um, of labels of uh, manufacturers that they work with. So make sure that you use that, that service. It's a godsend for me. So. And what I'll do is I'll pop the link on the post for tonight's show in the thrifting okay. board uh, and, and down below here too. So okay. after the shows are over, I'll get the links in there. Sounds good. And this is just an example of what it looks like within that site. This is an example of three different Vanity Fair. Vanity Fair is one of the bread and butter brands when it comes to lingerie. And uh, and they identify, you know, what the label looked like and, uh, you know, what, what it was found on. So, again, at least it gives you a decade because I do like to at least put the decade um, in, my, in my title or in the description of where uh, the item came from. So, okay, now we're going to move on to slips, both full and half, and go to the next slide then. 
So I, here's something I've never bought, so I'm really paying attention. Okay. <laughs> I'll, buy, I'll buy bras and PJs, but I've never so bought he says, yeah. So <laughs> this is a Van Ralt. Uh, this is a, a brand, and it's one of my favorite brands. And if you look at the slip, there's a lot of detail. There's a lot going on there. I mean, I can't even imagine wearing this underneath um, a garment. In fact, <laughs> I think a lot of times, you know, some of the uh, some of the kids these days, they're uh, wearing these as dresses even. I mean, if I could get away with it, I certainly would I think it's gorgeous, <laughs> uh, but lots of place, lots of detail, lots of froth and frill, as I like to say. And uh, this particular one sold for ninety dollars. So um, yeah, dang, yeah, definite money in it. Then this is a Powers oh. model is the name of uh, of this. It's the label, and uh, again, all that wonderful detail, the lace, the ruffles, and so forth, is what. Uh, what did it for me and this one sold for seventy dollars um there are a lot of labels out there um they're not you know there are definitely some that are better than others but if you've got detail like this you don't have to worry about what the label is it's in good condition it's a it's a pale blue so it was a great color it'll sell itself uh tina in the chat wants to know what decade are these most of these are from the 50s and 60s. That seems to be the era um, where I'm able to find them. Maybe 40s. Um, I'm not sure what this one was. I would say probably 50s on this one. And uh, Chris said it in the chat, and I was thinking of it today when I was looking at your store. Fantastic photos. What are you using for these these light ones on the black that everything's gone perfectly? Are you using um, one of them apps? No. No, well, I use uh, use Photoshop. So I take all of my pictures using a point and shoot. Although one of my business plans um, for this year is to start using my my phone, at least trying that to see how it goes. But I'm so old school, and I have a process I've used for so many years. Is you know, it's hard to teach an old dog and all of that. No, I use a um, I have a black backdrop that goes down onto the floor. Um, and then with just a little bit of adjusting in um, in Photoshop, I'm able to do that. My husband too, old school Photoshop. Excellent, yeah. well it's, done. Thank you very much. Oh, these are beautiful. Yeah, again, color, always go in color. This is a, a Vanity Fair and uh, it was uh, salmon was the color on this one. Only sold for 30. When I, when I looked up this stuff, when I was doing my research, I thought that one really should have sold for more. But uh, again, you got the lace at the bottom, and uh, it's, you know, the color just can't be beat. So, all right, then we're going to look at, um, at half slips. Half slips are not that great of a sell. Half slips are exactly what it says. They are half. <laughs> they don't have the upper part. <laughs> um, and actually, this one is more of what you would call a petticoat. Um, so they're a little bit harder to sell. So look for, uh, of course, your con you want your condition to be really good. And unique colors is good. Um, a lot of details and lace and so forth. And uh, a lot of times with my half slips, I will lot two, you know, three or four of them together to sell it that way but this one i got 40 dollars for so that's a, a pretty good and again kicker nick another brand that you see out there in uh, the lingerie okay so on that black one that's just a straight slip it's not wired or hooped or anything no 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 okay. no no none of my stuff has crinolines in it or anything and crinolines are those it's that real stiff uh, like netting or tool that yeah. makes the dress like really like stick out so um, I was although those girl, are great. If you, those. Have, <laughs> yeah, if you ever see those, pick them up. Um, crinolines are great, but I personally, I don't think I've ever dealt with any. So, so Stacy, uh, Stacy, not my wife, different Stacy, but spelled correctly with just an I. Uh, do, you, <laughs> do you know when they stop putting zippers in the side of slips? Um, no, I don't. And I'm, I have sold um, some other lingerie. I had a, a corset that had a, a side zipper in it. Um, oh wait, no, I think I've got a. A, a slip right now that has a side zipper probably in the 30s i would say yeah i don't know too much about that but yeah you will see that and that definitely means it's an older one as well it fits tighter so that way they have that's why they've got the zipper on the side and uh, uh um and rick wants to know how do you measure these do you, do you oh, put actual measurements in yes i do well the length i'll, I'll measure the length and then for a half slip 
I will take the elastic and uh, I use uh, on my, my can't really see it here, but I, I have a uh, tape measure taped to my desktop or to my desk. And so that way I can just lay it right out on it on there and and measure it uh, easily. And what I will do is I will measure it um, like the waist, for instance, unstretched. And then I'll take it and I'll stretch it as far as it'll go and, and also give that measurement as well. I also uh, do uh, bust measurements too on a full slip. And it's a little tricky, although a lot of times slips are sized by the bust size. Um, like it'll say size 36. That means it's a size 36 bust. Um, and then I also measure at the hips as well, approximate, do an approximate mm -hmm. measurement there. I've yeah, never the hip, the hip one's a tricky yeah. one, especially for dudes. I've been doing this yeah. a long time. I've done a lot of skirts, a lot of dresses. I go to do the hips. I'm still like, am I hitting the right spot? Because, of course, <laughs> unless I was a cross dresser, I've never, I mean, and I've worn a few dresses in my life, but. But you know, I don't know they wear them, so I don't know where the hips are normally at. I don't yeah, know. It well, it makes no sense it, to guys, you know. And it's it's different on all women too. I mean, we're all not shaped the same, you know. If you're long waisted, no. yeah, <laughs> long waisted or short waisted. What I usually do, I try to find the widest part of of the slip, like below, kind of the middle, which would be the waist. I try to find, you know, the the widest part, and that's where I'll measure it. And so. you, one last question before we move on. Do you find sure. uh, uh, what sizes sell the best? I, I think in vintage, though, I mean, they're, they're, do you find any big sizes in vintage? Not really. Um, I have found some vintage Lane Bryant, you know, for larger sizes, and those sold very well. I have not found size to be a huge issue, to be honest with you. I have sold size 32, which is pretty tiny, up to about size 38. Mostly it's size 36. Um, it just doesn't seem to be a detriment. Again, if the if the item is is in good condition and it's got some great qualities to it, it doesn't really matter what size it is. So there's a buyer out there for it. All right, tell me about yeah. these sexy these sexy. Yeah, panties. I know. Are those, those are sexy. <laughs> Aren't those great? Can you imagine? I would, I would totally wear those. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's TMI, but I would. <laughs> I have to say, panties are are a new thing for me. Now I've worn them all my life but I've, I've not really sold them until this year. Um, it's just kind of, I don't know, kind of gave me the heebie-jeebies, but there's a garage sale where I bought the mother load of, um, of vintage lingerie two years ago. Um, it was a collector who was downsizing her collection and I bought a lot of stuff from her. She had another garage sale this year and uh, it was mostly panties and girdles and stuff like that. And so oh, wow. since I had, since I had bought some previously, I knew that there was some, you know, some good stuff. So um, I, I grabbed some and, and glad that I did. So one of the things that you want to know about, about uh, panties, there is a term called a mushroom gusset. And I'm assuming it has to do with the, the it's that panel between the legs. It's called the gusset. And I guess it's the shape. It's like a mushroom shape. As opposed to the ones in the previous screen that's had a seam down the middle, but it's mushroom gusset that that people are looking for. So that's something that you'll want to, um, you know, pay attention to. Also, when it comes to panties, um, sheer is king. If you are queen, maybe is the better term. <laughs> <laughs> If we're going to go to the next slide, you'll see how much a pair of used panties can give you. What? Yeah, $194.50. Yeah. Um, and again, sheer is the most desirable feature when it comes to panties, I have learned. Now, I sold a pair of the same brand, the same style, the Shirio, <clears throat> last year. And I had done some research uh, and I did a fixed price of buy it now of um, I think $89 and they sold right away. And so this year or this time when I came, this was a, a different pair that I bought um, at that garage sale from the collector. And I decided to try an auction format. And uh, yeah, I highly yeah. recommend giving that a try on some of these items. I would never have dreamt uh, dreamed of asking that much money. So yeah, I paid 50 cents for them and they sold for $194. And I believe I started the auction at 89 since that was what I'd sold the other ones at and wanted to get at least that much out of it. So that is awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah. 
One of the things you want to look for inside uh, the panties, because it'll be inside the legs, are garters or garter tabs. Now, garter tabs are just like a little piece of, they're like a little satin loop that the garter would slip onto. Um, and sometimes it is the actual hardware, like it is shown in this particular one. So it's just you want to check and see if they're there so you can make note of it in your description because that is a feature that uh, that you will find along the way. She's doing like my private bolo list right here. She's like, <laughs> all the things that I have not found yet. I'm looking. I'm going to Ohio. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is something I had never encountered before. They're uh, by uh, Olga. I'm sure a lot of you ladies at least have heard of the brand Olga. And this is called a bubble panty. Uh, why? I mean, I know why. You can tell by the, yeah. by the, the shape of them. But I'm not quite sure why that design was ever created, but uh, you know, the detail on that is, is fantastic. Um, wow. The little rosettes and the lace, and these also had built in garter tabs that you could attach the actual hardware to. And, you know, they sold for $70. So that's not bad for, you know, a piece of froth and frills. So, okay, we're going to move along here. Beautiful. <laughs> Sexy long nightgowns. <laughs> yeah, to nightgowns and robes. And I, I think nightgowns and robes are probably my favorite. Um, I think that's where I kind of got hooked on all the frills and froth of, of uh, vintage lingerie um, is with those old nightgowns from uh, the 50s and the 60s especially. Uh, this particular one... Um, I think this was a this is a Vanity Fair. I think I still have this one up uh, up for sale, but um, you know it's just kind of your basic gown. But uh, if you want to go to the next one there, Jason, this yep. is this is my Whoa. favorite kind of thing. What? here. This is white chiffon and uh, a peignoir. A peignoir is a two piece set, usually a robe and a nightgown underneath. Um, that match, go together. And being white like this, you would want to make sure that you use the term bridal or wedding set as well. That's very often, more than likely, this belonged to a bride at some point. Or a lot of times, you know, um, uh, brides-to-be back in the 50s and the 60s, they would receive stuff like this at a shower. And they would take the box that it all came in and the tissue, and they would shove it in the bottom drawer. <laughs> and oh, yeah. It, honestly, it was probably, it probably didn't even see daylight the exactly. night that they were they probably were in the dark and exactly. look at the collar on that thing yeah, i know isn't that amazing that? i it just yeah yeah and again 80 dollars for this beauty oh i just love that i sell hey, that hey day. mom did you have one of these oh, I, did. <laughs> Didn't, I think she showed it or talked about it on one of your on one of your shows <laughs> yeah that's what i'm saying sure. <laughs> <laughs> and again, this is another peignoir set. Uh, this one is, um, it was ivory with some blue details. And again, it's all about the details and it's about the condition. You know, there's lace, the whole bodice. And by the way, that's that the top part, the top, like around the bust, that's referred to as the bodice, B-O-D-I-C-E. Um, it's all lace, lace covered with uh, nylon underneath it. Um, and it's just, you know, it's only knee length, but it's just, it's just gorgeous. Vanity Fair is, again, my bread and butter brand. So now this next gown is one that came from the collector I, I bought Ooh. from. And I'd never heard of this brand, Snowden. Again, there are so many brands, so many I've never heard from. Gorgeous chiffon, uh, 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 very sheer chiffon over uh pink nylon and with all of these em embroidered flowers um it was just gorgeous um so it was purchased for four and sold for ninety dollars so that's the kind of thing you want to look for it's all about eye appeal as you can imagine the next one kind of falls in the same category i'm sure a lot of you especially ladies and gentlemen too if you follow fashion if uh, familiar with the uh, elsa scaparelli she was a contemporary of coco chanel uh, they were rivals um, of a sort. And uh, this one was also purchased from that particular collector. I purchased it for five, sold it for $136. This nightgown nice. is just amazing. It had multiple layers of chiffon and nylon and tulle and uh, with the pink velvet ribbon detail and the lace panels on the bodice uh, that went all the way down. 
that thing is just stunning absolutely gorgeous so Elsa Scaparelli always buy anything Elsa Scaparelli that you ever see anywhere uh, Missy mm -hmm. Lane is another brand that's a bread and butter um, you can see that in this case um, having uh, the background that goes all the way you know onto the floor helps with this kind of an item so you can kind of see how it puddles and um, you know see the the width of the of the nightgown and so forth and all that that lace bodice and so forth another $70 nightgown there are collectors out there I have a couple of gentlemen in the California area um, who just collect Missy Lane and don't really know why but you know there are collectors of everything out there mm -hmm. they enjoy beautiful things and they certainly are okay now we're going to get into the world of uh bustiers and corsets and girdles <laughs> this particular one as you can see it's got the attached um garters and this will have um hook and eye closures in the back and there's usually quite a few of them but as you can see you know it's got the eyelet lace in there and this particular vintage bustier sold for 70 dollars um the vertical <laughs> lines uh that you see running down is called boning and many 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 years ago it was actual bone that they used um, and it, that's what gives it the support and helps hold things in um, and there's light boning and what's considered heavier boning and you'll see some of that later on in the presentation but uh, that's what those things do they actually give it the structure so okay are just amazing Oh, I thank you. This particular yeah. one, this is a gorgeous satin bustier. And the, this has those famous bullet cups um, or cone cups also as they're known as and uh, sold for $80. Um, at the very bottom, you see those little tabs? Those are garter tabs. So it didn't have the actual garters attached to it, but you could slip them in there. The hard way the hardware works, it's like a little hooky thing that goes, that slides inside. <laughs> there, so. <laughs> it's a official Lucky thing. Yes, exactly. I cannot even imagine wearing some of this stuff. I don't know how many of you have been watching the marvelous Mrs. Maisel, uh, but this is the kind of thing she wears under her those fantastic outfits that she wears, and uh, they're a, a, a corselet is what they call these. They're they're not quite. They don't have boning in them like a corset or a bustier would have. It's an all in one girdle, hold you together, and bra thing, and it's also got attached. Guard Garters. And uh, I guess it's, you know, similar to the modern day Spanx, you know, that a lot of people wear. I won't touch it. I'm too old for that, but I know, <laughs> I know that they're out there. Another uh, girdle here. Um, this is the kind of girdle that my mother and my grandmother would have worn. It's got the, the lace panel in the front, the attached garters. And if you see the bottom of it, it's almost like a skirt. And it's what they call open bottom as opposed to a panty girdle which mm -hmm. is a girdle that's, you know, it's got legs to it. This has got a, an open bottom. So it's just, you know, some of the terminology. All right. Now this is, this is where you get into the, your torture devices here. Uh -huh. uh, this is a lace up corset. Corset um, has heavy boning. It's usually has laces as opposed to the hook and eye closures. And uh, honestly, they're like torture devices. You want to go to the next one. And I've, <laughs> this thing here. I mean, this is like, okay so i've got it took me forever even to figure this sucker out it's got this this like this pad in here which um is back support i believe i mean this thing i, I cannot even oh my, imagine oh what a woman has done i don't think fashion when sure. i see that <laughs> that's I'm not the f word that popped up it, it was so difficult for me to even get this on the mannequin and figure out how it worked. And I'm still not sure I've got it exactly correct. But I mean, look at those garters. I mean, that elastic is like an inch and a half wide. That's some heavy duty foundation garment there. Yeah. Do you read any? Go ahead. Do you read any blogs or um, do you have anybody that, you know, any websites or anything that you go to for more in-depth, like reading on, you know, the history of these or you know, yeah. any other picture IDs for this kind of stuff? 
actually, um, I get a lot of information from that website that was in my Fashion very Gun. first slide. Yeah. yeah. I use them um, a lot. Because they also have information besides, I mean, th there's more to that site besides just label identification. Oh, sure. Yeah. And I usually take it an item at a time. I wish I had the time to just go out and, and do reading and research and maybe in some lifetime I will. As it is right now, <laughs> if I get an item like this, for instance, I definitely had to go do some research on this one a little bit and find out more about it. Now, the picture's not real great on this one, at least that one, uh, but it's the, the material is, is quite beautiful. It's pink and it's got, um, you know, these little um, embroidered flowers in it too. And so it, it's quite fancy considering it looks like a torture device. <laughs> so in any event, um, the other thing I want to mention is that uh, damaged goods. Um, you know, you always want to buy your best condition, but uh, you will buy stuff that uh, you get at home and you realize, oh my gosh, I did not see that. What you want to do is lot it all together and just sell it as cutter because this is one of my favorite. I haven't, I've, I've got a bunch of stuff I have, I need to put together in a lot. This is just like the hugest pile of froth and frill. This is a like a petticoat and it's got all these layers. <laughs> of of ruffles and stuff but there's a giant hole in it and so i just couldn't bear to throw it out so i'm um going to be um lotting it together again with some other items some other um you know some other things like for instance here's a slip that has look at this i don't know if you can see this beautiful lace i mean that's like got eight inch lace at the bottom of this black half slip and it's no label or anything so that's going to go in my cutter lot um a wonderful um i don't know for some reason the colors on this it was pink or blue over green chiffon um two different colors of chiffon and it was just gorgeous and there's a giant giant hole in the back which i didn't see till i got home i think i have a matching piece to that one and mine is also half <laughs> Are you don't want to cut that out of there Angela. <laughs> no no but i have the baby like doll 90 that matches giant. it this giant hunk <laughs> that's missing out of the back. I couldn't believe I didn't see that. But uh, hey, and you know, somebody might be looking for that part to be missing. There I you go. You, you know, I would. Know. But <laughs> you know, there are people out there who do all kinds of creative things. And um, I've had good luck selling vintage linens, you know, with cutters. Um, like yeah. chenille bedspreads and tablecloths and other stuff like that. And so this stuff will definitely uh, work as well. So that. Well, well, and that you brought the biggest <laughs> audience we've had in a long time. So if you do me a favor, giving that a big thumbs yeah, up down thumbs below up. right here. And uh, I want to thank her. Now, those of you in the secret beach, guess what? We're only halfway there. And that's got a whole nother presentation just for you guys. So if you've not joined the Seeker Beach and you want to know more about it, hit me up on Facebook. And uh, it is a group full of uh, tons of webinars like this and, and tons more. So we're heading over there. So don't forget, head over to the Seeker Beach and uh, grab the link for the next show. And I want to tell everybody that somebody already bought something from Erica. So she just let me know that. So thank you. Awesome. We already bought it. And I found, the, I found my item. So I just bought my item. So Erica's got two sales already what you got there angela it says love ah uh, love for so, erica so again thank you everyone for tuning in tonight if uh if you're not on the thrifting board come join us if you're uh, a member of the uh, uh federal government that's been affected by the shutdown or a contractor or your spouse find the post tomorrow drop a note and say hi i'm one of those and we will get up a new person every day and hopefully we'll get you some sales and help you out in this time of need so Amen. Uh, with that i say goodbye except for we'll see you over at the secret beach for those of you in the secret beach good night thank you annette thank You're you welcome. angela bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.